hope everyone have enjoy, has enjoyed their break and let's get back to work. So we have a presentation on the theme of the intersection of leisure, mice, and local needs, the trends in sustainable, sustainable city tourism development. So we have our keynote speaker and the moderator, Roger Simons. He is a director of MCI Regional Sustainability. So please welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you today and representing the mice industry. I saw a few um, puzzled faces last night when we had a, a toast to the mice industry. So if any of you are unfamiliar with what mice uh, means, it actually stands for meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibitions. And it's a, it's a rather large part of the tourism industry. There have been a, a number of economic impact studies of our industry. And just one example from the United States that was conducted by Price Waterhouse Coopers identified that in the year 2012, there were 1.83 million meetings happening in the United States alone. And that generated 115 billion US dollars of gross domestic product for the United States. So it's a huge industry. And I think traditionally, the mice industry um, has been a little bit behind the tourism industry in terms of sustainability. But we're catching up fast. And that's one area where we'll hope to see um, closer alignment with the GSTC in the future. But the first, um, the first idea that I want to leave you with um, today is that cities are the drivers of today's global economy. Many of us live in cities. We're seeing this growth in urbanization, people moving from the countryside to find works and jobs in cities. And actually, according to the World Bank in 2015, 72% of cities outperform their countries in terms of economic growth. So there's more funding available for companies to cut through red tape. There's more talent available and lots of growth in industry. And if you look at this, this map on the, uh, on the wall there, this is the top 10 talent capitals of the world. So the places which are good to do business, good to hire employees in the year 2025. And you'll see New York, you'll see London, you'll see Paris, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Sydney. And then if I pop up another um, map, which is the 50 most popular tourist destinations of the world, according to Forbes Traveler magazine. Again, you will see New York, you will see Paris, you will see London, you will see Hong Kong, and you will see Sydney. So actually, there's 60% of those um, world talent capitals, the great places to do business, to have your company, to have your employees, to live, to work, and to play, are the same places that are fantastic to go to as a tourist and are the most popular uh, destinations of the world. So there's a very interesting correlation. And um, to fit in this, the mice industry, so meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions, sit in between business and leisure. So they're the bridge between the two. So what we're now seeing is that leading cities understand that their competitiveness is directly linked to their capacity to bring social, economic, environmental well-being. So you can develop a city to be a great place to have your company, to have your headquarters, to attract your talent, to live, but also to bring in large meetings, exhibitions, and tourism. What we need to see is more and more aligned strategy with that as a focus. So the good news is the tourism and mice industries, which we all work in, are a powerful accelerator of sustainable development and competitiveness. And um, we've been working with about 40 destinations over the last couple of years, looking at some of the key trends in sustainable mice destination leaders. So cities that are great for conventions, meetings, incentives, and conferences, what is it that they are doing to become a leader in sustainability? One of the tools that we've been using is actually the Global Destination Sustainability Index, which is um, a benchmarking. And we've learned a lot this morning about how collaboration and measurement is very important. The mice industry, the convention bureaus, are not quite ready for something as sophisticated and as powerful as the um, GSTC criteria. So this is a pathway to get them ready for that, and we hope to see closer alignment. But we've got 40 cities participating from around the world, from Africa, from um, Asia, Europe, and, um, of course, Australia. And we've learnt some key characteristics of sustainable mice destinations. And we've got two leaders um, with us on the stage today who are going to share a little bit more in detail about what they're doing in their cities as well. 
So the first characteristic of a leading sustainable mice city is to have a strong vision. And I loved what Xavier said about some of this stuff being common sense, but common sense not actually being common. Um, the first one is to have that idea of where you're going, and we see the role of the Convention Bureau as setting that vision for the destination, setting the um, vision for the supply chain, for the members of the Convention Bureau. And we're looking for a multi-year plan which has a focus on that economic growth, has a focus on the environment, and of course social inclusion, jobs and development. And we want to see a plan that works across those areas and is relevant for the mice and for the tourism industries. We see a lot of cities are doing great plans in silos. So maybe, you know, Sydney's working on a great carbon plan. We're seeing other um, cities working on great economic development plans, but we're not seeing them integrated or working together with industry. So that's one of the key opportunities. Two great examples um, from Singapore did a fantastic study called the Challenges, Innovation and Green Growth on, on their uh, mice industry and Thailand worked on a 2020 Sustainable Destination Master Plan also for the convention um, part. The second characteristic of a leading sustainable mice city is really understanding that mice, leisure and residence needs can be integrated. So what we're looking for is the old world is building that convention center or building that Olympic venue even on the outskirts of town. People need to bus out there. And when the event isn't happening, it becomes empty. It becomes what we call a white elephant. It's unused, often forgotten. You can look at a back at all of the Olympic cities of the past and see many examples of these. So modern city planners are looking at ways to integrate the convention center or large-scale venues in the community. So what we're calling here fostering urban cores and reverse suburbanism. So integrated communities with convention centers, places to live and places to play. We're seeing young people of today, they want to live in these shiny condominiums overlooking the waterfront of a city. So it's having these modern residential developments close to convention centers, having lifestyle dining and shopping, and of course having cultural attractions like galleries, cinemas, theaters as well, integrated with the MICE venue. So that's what we want to see more of in the future. One great example of that is, of course, Darling Harbour Live. Um, this is the new convention centre, which is about halfway up to that picture at the moment. It's, it's looking very close to that. They've built the new convention centre, the ICC Sydney, down there on the waterfront and really integrated a business and leisure district. So they've got a five-star hotel, commercial and residential urban village called Darling Square. Who doesn't want to live in Darling Square? Doesn't that sound lovely? And they have a pedestrian light rail connection which is bringing people to that convention centre. And of course, it's been created through a public-private partnership. So you've got the right balance of commerce, um, business interest, as well as the local government policy being in play. The third trend that we're seeing is that leaders create networks and they inspire collaboration. Again, one of those kind of common sense things that aren't so common. But what's new in this new era, in this new sustainability world, in this um, world of dynamic um, disruption, is that collaboration is no longer cheating. It's no longer just copying people, being inspired by that. It's coming together, traditional competitors, and working on sustainability challenges. And one example from the mice industry is the greening events scheme that happened in um, Finland. And this was Helsinki, Espoo and Vanta coming together. Normally, when a convention is looking to come to Finland, these cities would be competing. It would either go to Helsinki or it would go with Espoo. So it's really quite cutthroat out there between mice destinations trying to attract business. But what's really good about this is that these cities came together to work on an initiative um, around greening their events, so providing eco-tools for producers, an eco-guide for visitors, and really working together to create a sustainable events industry in Finland. Okay, then the fourth trend that we're seeing is having the right policy and having the right government buy-in and the right incentives, so the carrot and the stick, to make sure that this is happening on the ground. And we want to see kind of investment inspiration, we want to see the management of sustainable venues um, that attract business as well. And a couple of examples um, of a great policy I like to share is, is Visit Scotland, because it's quite ambitious. Visit Scotland's vision is... Um, 
to be recognised as a leader in sustainable tourism development, not just within Scotland, but at a European and world level. So really quite an ambitious statement. They want to be recognised across the world um, as the sustainable national tourism organisation. And you can see a couple of their objectives. We didn't have space for all of them today. But you can see reducing the seasonality of demand, reducing the impact of tourism transport, looking at the carbon issue, um, minimising tourism resource use and waste production, and of course, um, protecting and enhancing Scotland's natural and cultural heritage. So really quite a kind of broad um, policy and a broad vision for Scotland. My uh, favourite poster boy for kind of policy coming down, being enforced and, and rolled out on the ground is San Francisco. I've been showing this story for quite a while. Um, the biggest source of waste for all conventions, exhibitions, um, is actually plastic water bottles. I think uh, Xavier uh, shared that number from the marathon, I think was probably in Barcelona, where they had 65,000 plastic water bottles from runners just chucking them. Um, it's incredible the amount of, of water that we go through. A convention of 5,000 people, um, each person drinks three bottles a day for three days. You can imagine it's a large volume of plastic water bottles. So it's a big impact to legislate that these plastic bottles are no longer allowed in the public property in San Francisco. Many of them are operating venues. So there's one thing that you can do um, to have a sustainable event, it's get rid of those plastic bottles. And I'm pleased to see that Randy and the team here in Korea have got us with these, with these glasses. So um, that was my poster boy comment for San Francisco, but just what happened in July is this. Um, San Francisco banned styrofoam. Fantastic. Um, this means all of that nasty plastic foam that's used in food packaging, in cups, buying takeaways, used for coolers, put your ice in, um, pool toys, it's gone. And this isn't one of those goals that we've got for 2020 or 2025 or 2030. This is happening next July. So it's really kind of strong policy, um, enacting sustainability on the ground, really inspirational stuff. And another big um, source of, of waste for events and the whole uh, supply chain. I worked with a venue in, in Singapore and they were having certified sustainable seafood that would always arrive in this nasty polystyrene. Um, so this, it's dealing with issues like that. The fifth trend is that leaders build capacity. They're implementing programs that first inspire their local industry, setting the, the standard, the banner under which the industry should march. This is the goal that we're looking for, and we'd like you to be part of that journey. They're focusing on what skills um, the suppliers need, whether it be hotels, venues, um, DMCs, transport companies. What is that skill gap? And that's what uh, Nichapa does in, in her role. They look at fostering collaboration, so bringing restaurants together that are focused on sustainable menus, having them talk together, look at ways of sourcing new food together. And they're, of course, improving the quality and competitive of that destination through everything that they're doing. One great example from this would be the German Convention Bureau. It's a huge national body um, in Germany, obviously, and they have trained 400 sustainability consultants for the mice industry. So they've been trained by the German Convention Bureau in their own um, qualification, allowing them to help um, event planners, exhibition planners, organize more sustainable events. Vancouver, another example over in North America and Canada, they have energy specialists which provide consulting and advice on the carbon emissions for all events that come into, into Vancouver. So really quite innovative and forward-thinking um, solutions that they're providing. The sixth um, trend that we see is that leaders drive certification and standards, and we're all familiar with these. There's a huge range of certifications, both nationally and internationally. One example I wanted to share with you is Gothenburg, which is a leading sustainable destination. They're Sweden's largest, um, second largest city, if you haven't heard of them. And what they did is said, we're going to go for certification because it's a great way of showing how mature and sophisticated our industry is with sustainability. So they have 100% of their mice venue certified, 92% of their hotels certified, but they've gone deeper into the supply chain for tourism and business tourism and had 50% of their local taxis certified as green taxis as well, green transport solutions, and 30% of their restaurants certified as well. So really taking a, a broader focus on certification and managing to achieve something quite impressive for such a large city.
Another example is Thailand have a very strong focus on standards as, as an indicator of the quality of that destination. Um, T said we're promoting the MICE venue, food safety, energy management, and ISO 2012 1, which is an event sustainability management system, and of course ISO 22301, which is business continuity. So, really, a kind of broad perspective of standards, and they're being supported financially um, as well by the national body there. I loved Xavier's presentation this morning about communication, learned so much from the way he spoke about marketing and agree with a lot of what he says, but we don't often stop to think about what's the best way to communicate our message. So in terms of campaigns, a couple I wanted to share with you. One example on the top um, right there is Visit Oregon. Um, they've got a great campaign on YouTube, if, you, if you've got time to check that out. You can see there there's a lady just kind of lying on a bench there saying, we like it here you might too. So really kind of natural human communication. You've got the second one there from Scotland, from Ben on the Isle of Skye. He talks about how he worked in the city. It wasn't fulfilling him in his job, so he moved back to the Isle of Skye. Now he's a diver for scallops, and it's a beautiful, natural environment. And below you've got um, Copenhagen, who are focusing on a communication around a single issue, which is the protection of bees. So really a good issue around ecology. But what links all of these um, campaigns is a couple of things. First, with sustainability, we need to be humble. It doesn't really work when we come out and say, we are the most sustainable destination in the world. Look at all this amazing stuff we do. It's about saying, we have an audacious goal. We haven't quite reached it, but here's the good stuff that we are doing. Here's what we're trying to do. Humor, again, something that Xavier picked up on, it's always good, because what we're doing here is we're not doing business-to-consumer communication, we're always just doing human-to-human -human communication, and we kind of forget that. So the humanity is really important in the way that we're communicating and keeping it simple and authentic. And with that, I wanted to show you a video from um, Visit Denmark, specifically for the mice industry, which kind of welcomes you to come to Denmark and see what it's all about. So hopefully if I press this button, it will start. This is Denmark. These are Danes. In Denmark, people work and play together. The Danes like to collaborate and have meetings. Many meetings every day. Working together, meeting together, we can make things better, they say. Hotels and meeting places think that there is room for improvement, and they know that sustainable practices save money. Over 45% of the hotel rooms and meeting places in Denmark is eco-certified. Less waste and less energy means less cost. Fewer chemicals mean healthier people. Healthy people make healthy and productive meetings. People want better events that don't cost more. Better events with great organic food, local flavours, great service. Government leaders all over the world want more places for great sustainable events. The Copenhagen Sustainable Meetings Protocol provides a simple map showing how to use sustainability to create better and more sustainable events. The protocol was tested on the COP15 Climate Conference in Copenhagen an award-winning conference because it was a smart, sustainable and innovative event. Much work has been done, but much work is still needed. Denmark will host the European Union Presidency 2012. Smart design and good management will see over 200 meetings organised to international ISO sustainability standards. Meeting industry professionals across Denmark will collaborate to support the principles of sustainability in terms of efficiency, fairness and innovation, helping deliver savings and quality to the organisers of future events, leaving a positive legacy throughout the nation. Much work has been done, but the journey to a better, sustainable world is a long one. With good design, good hotels, good meeting places, and good food, great results can happen. But it needs collaboration, leadership, and vision. This is them. These are dangers. This is an invitation to collaborate and 
So that's a video just pre uh, presented for the mice industry, which I thought was quite powerful in the way that it invites you and, and makes you feel part of the movement for a more sustainable and, and a better place to hold meetings. The eighth trend that we see is that leaders develop their community, and they're doing it with more thought. Um, we're seeing destinations, convention bureaus, creating programs that connect incoming visitors to social and environmental needs, but focusing on innovation and focusing on things that are relevant. So it's no longer about every destination in the world offering planting trees to conventions coming. It's not good enough. It's, it's looking at what the incoming event is about and trying to find some skills-based volunteerism or other activities, but it has to be relevant. So um, a couple of examples of, of cities doing great stuff is, of course, Bangkok, and we're going to hear a little bit more from Nichapa on this. But what they've done is create and stimulate their own organic rice farming in the, in the Bangkok Delta there to connect um, rice growers and local farmers directly to venues and major five-star hotels. So cutting out the middleman and really supporting local communities, supporting families, and supporting the organic um, food movement. And they're telling that story in a great way. There you can see a picture of the grower of the rice being served at that buffet um, at a convention as well. So a great example of what they're doing. Um, also, Copenhagen, I love this one um, because it's so integrated in a kind of holistic sustainability way. Um, this is the Bella Center, which is the major convention center of Copenhagen, and you can see the hotel behind it. On the roof of the Bella Center, there are one million bees. And those bees are tended by um, homeless people and asylum seekers. So it's providing great jobs and employment for people that need it from disadvantaged groups. Obviously, having the bees on the roof there is protecting um, fragile ecosystems. I saw in the news last week that some bees in Hawaii have been added to the endangered species list, which is the first time we've seen that, which is super scary to see bees uh, becoming endangered. Um, and then last, there's a really good business case for this because obviously the honey that is produced uh, by those bees on the roof of the convention center is then used to flavor the ice cream. It's used to create um, a local beer that is brewed in Copenhagen. And then um, some krona from each bottle of beer that is sold goes back into that social enterprise. So it's a really lovely story of how you can connect that business angle, great storytelling, and you're helping protect the environment and supporting the local society in Copenhagen. And that organization is called BB. Um, so research by the Society of Incentive Travel, um, and if you're not quite sure what an incentive is, I just want to be just uh, percent sure that you're on the page. It's an event that is created to motivate and reward people. Normally, for um, salespeople that have met their very high targets, you might fly them to Hawaii, you might fly them to Alaska or to Paris for a wonderful weekend. Um, so really high-end, um, expensive trips that happen all over the world to luxury destinations and up-and-coming destinations. And um, with this study, what we found was that over two-thirds of both buyers, so people organizing these types of incentives, and then the sellers, so local destinations, maybe their resorts in the Maldives, maybe their hotels in, in Vancouver, they're incorporating um, CSR uh, packages and activities into, into what they're doing. So this is no longer a trend. This is standard practice for um, incentives, rewarding people overseas. You have to connect them to the local community and make them feel that great kind of teamwork. Um, the ninth one, um, which is interesting, is leaders are using sustainability to drive economic growth. I'm still frustrated at the number of times I talk to a hotel that doesn't understand why they should be interested in sustainability. It's, it does still happen out there. Um, the same with convention bureaus. Many haven't linked the business opportunity yet. Copenhagen are a great example of this. Here you can see where they're actually attracting events related to industries that they're focused on, but they're also creating events as well. So this is a trend of the future where convention bureaus are increasingly um, working with destination marketing organizations to create events as well. Vivid Sydney is a perfect example of a down, uh, downtime in Sydney with seasonality in the winter. They created a light um, festival that brought in tourism um, throughout the year, and it's been hugely successful. The same is happening in the mice industry. If the events aren't naturally coming to a destination, we can create leadership events as well. Uh, a great place that's doing um, fantastically at this is actually Singapore, which is where I'm based. And what they want to do is identify industries, economic engines in Singapore that we want to support. So one of those is urban solutions, the environment and energy. You can see their transport, lifestyle, and travel. 
And what they want to do is profile Singapore as a destination for best-in-class business events within that sector. So they're getting all of that intellectual capital coming into their city, the greatest minds, the greatest academics and businesses coming together to help them work on solutions. And diving a bit deeper into that strategy, what they do is then create um, an annual calendar focused on these industries. And then they create specific weeks to attract events in that sector. So you can see Urban Solutions there, where they've got International Water Week, they've got the Clean Summit, they've got the Waste Met. You can see there's another one that happens in December, which is Energy Week, where they're bringing in smart technologies, gas, um, International Energy Week, etc. So it's really quite focused on aligning the industries with the business events coming in. So an integrated strategy, which is creating those numbers as well for the government. Last but not least is, of course, leaders need to monitor, they need to measure and report transparently. And we're seeing a lot of destinations having sustainability reports. Um, this is one example from the mice industry where Orlando have created a specific report for the mice industry and they're using the GRI framework to guide that approach as well. But that helps us, obviously, to prevent greenwash. So um, our feeling is that leadership is focused on eight areas um, for leading sustainable mice destinations. There are many that are doing great jobs in, in different areas, but no one is doing superbly at all of it. So the first thing is to have the strategy in place, foster the networks and the communication and the conversations, that great collaboration in the destination, focus on driving standards as well and certifications, whether they be international standards or local standards, whatever works best for the destination, having the right policy and incentives in place, um, seeing the business angle, so working with the Convention Bureau to attract business based on this um, marketing proposition and, and what the infrastructure presents. Uh, fostering the community and working and supporting um, social enterprises and connecting those into the industry throughout the whole supply chain. And then, of course, communicating it in a meaningful way. And I think this is where we, we all have an opportunity um, to be a bit better at that. And then, of course, monitoring and reporting everything that they're doing. And the last kind of thought that I want to leave you with before handing over um, to Nachapa, who's going to share with us what's happening in Thailand, is that leaders aren't the people that are just doing the great things. That John Maxwell said that leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. So how do we work with our communities and supply chains to empower them to take the step in sustainable mice and progress? Thank you. So we'll invite Nachapa from uh, TSEB, Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau. She's in charge of the Mice Capabilities Department, driving capability building for uh, the whole of the Thailand mice industry. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sawadee Um In Korean, Annyeonghaseyo. I hope I do it right. First, I'd like to... Can I have the... Picture? You can. You. Apologies. First, um, I'd like to thank and also commend GSTC for running this conference um, addressing the key issues that all living beings are facing, which is on sustainability. And I do hope that the success of this conference would somehow can generate a lot of positive impact in terms of restoration, preservation, prevention, or innovation to create a better future for our next generation or so. Now, my topic is on intersection of leisure and mice. And like what Roger said just now, when we talk about mice, we are talking or referring to meetings, incentive conventions, and exhibitions. Some in other countries, mostly in European, they would refer to this as meetings industry. In America, they would call this industry as business, uh, as meetings and exhibitions. In Australia, they call it business events. Most of the Asian countries, we call it mice. But by whatever terms that they are using, we are talking about the same thing. Now, since mice and leisure and tourism are very closely related, some countries would round mice under tourism. The others, they would round mice under trade and investment. So it really depends on the policy and framework each country would focus upon. Now, what's the difference between mice 
or what are the relevance between MICE and leisure. Uh, MICE is basically, we are talking about business travelers. So we have a two, we, it's a combination of business and also um, leisure traveler. When we talk about leisure traveler, of course, we are the consumption, we are the consumer of tourism products and services, and therefore we are the customer of those hospitality supply chain providers, for example, hotels, restaurants, attractions, retail, tours, transportation, and also food services. But since MICE is definitely, or primary objective of MICE or the, um, business, is on business, and therefore most of the agenda would focus more on how they can serve the original or the planned objectives. And if we are talking about being the organizer, there are certain area of additional business entities that are involved in my sectors. For example, if you are the professional congress organizer, not only we are the customers to hospitality supply chain provider, we are also need to procure services from registration provider, maybe on photography interpreter, um, security venues, convention center, if you are event management company, of course we have to hire entertainment like what we had um, such a great time last night. We also have to have a provider on light and sound. If you are um, exhibition management company, we have to engage um, contractors, especially on stand building, the freight forwarding, light and sound, event marketing, exhibition hall, or furniture rental, equipment rental. Or if we are the destination um, management companies, we have to involve ground transportation service provider. We also need to have to come up with an interesting tour program, social program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And because we have to engage with both hospitality and also business entity, that is why the benefit of MICE is that it can create a lot of or multiple benefits to the country, especially in terms of um, visitor spendings. According to the um, research, it is said that MICE travelers generate three times higher revenue than leisure traveler, and MICE can also facilitate trade and investment and also knowledge transfer, not only on direct um, contribution in terms of direct revenue to the host country, my sector can also give a lot of good control on seasonality and also improve employment. In addition, MICE can also strategically contribute to the country in a sense that it can facilitate the foreign direct investment. It can spur domestic investment in terms on infrastructure, technology, and innovation to be able to remain competitive over the other um, countries. And MICE can also up local business climate. However, MICE is one of the um, factors that can create a lot of negative um, impact on environment, especially in terms of traveling, we create quite a number of greenhouse gas emission. Waste from events are massive, and if any country or any city would like to invest in new facility, of course, they would affect biodiversity. So we can see that mice industry can, crea can create and have a very positive impact on social and economic area. However, on environmental area, that's the area that we have to work on. Now, as for Thailand, Thailand Convention and Exhibition Bureau, we are the government agency and we report ourselves directly to the Prime Minister's office and it's our task to promote mines. And therefore, sustainability is one of the concerns that we always have, and it is the area under my wing. And basically, sustainability is one of my personal passion um, that I love to tackle upon, somehow giving away um, the intelligence or do whatever I can in order to promote sustainability concept. Because to me, sustainability is nothing else but mindset. We started the journey on sustainability since 2008, and I believe that Thailand can be among top three countries in Asia 
that um, truly advocates sustainability on mice industry as positive marketing tools as well as to protect environment. Throughout eight years of advocacy, we have been promoting through intelligence, providing a lot of good knowledge, promotional campaigns, and I'd like to humbly share with you a few of our achievements. In the year 2009, we come up with um, green meetings guideline, and I believe that we probably are among the first country in Southeast Asia that actually launch and be very serious about green meetings guideline. It is a very simple guideline, for example, the temperature should be set in the meeting room at 25 degrees Celsius and not more or not less. Um, no suit. Uh, when you attend a conference, no plastic bottle. So it is a very easy step, and I think that is a fundamental step that all Thai mice operators uh, were taking on, and uh, it served them as a good stepping stone to go up the ladder to um, engage in a more sophisticated initiatives. In the following years, we introduced ISO 5001, which is Energy Management System, and in order to encourage um, mice operators to be on board and get themselves certified, we provide 70% financial support on consultancy fees, as well as online, offline promotional campaign. And from the support that we provided, we have the world's first exhibition um, venue um, certified, and that is Mung Thong Thani for those who, who are from Thailand. In the year 2012, we launched the concept of sustainability and introduced ISO 2121, which is Event Sustainability Management System. We are the second country in the world after London Olympic that announced this campaign and provide an active support to any um, mice operators. And we have the first certified hotel in the world, which is Plaza Itani, under a member of a Royal Meridian Hotel um, that was certified with the program. And I am very proud of that. The following year, we partner with Thailand Greenhouse Gas um, Greenhouse Gas Management Organization to set up a carbon footprint assessment guideline for mice operator. We also create a support program for operators adopting carbon neutral event production. Um, and the campaign has been going on and still going on um, to this very date. 2014, um, we have the first sustainable destination master plan for Thailand on mice industry with the hope that it would ease the transition of Thailand to be um, towards a more harmonious and also become a leading international sustainable destination that catalyzes dynamic economic, social, and sustainable transformation and shared prosperity. So our, fo our focus is more on the shared prosperity internally because that is how we define um, sustainable development within the country. The following year, we created um, a guidebook on Thailand Sustainable Events Guidebook. It also provides a checklist on how to manage, on how to implement, on how to report, and how to procure um, sustainable events. We also have a guideline on how to organize a carbon neutral event, and this is given away for free to all the mice operators and for those who would like to adopt this program, they can ask for subsidy. We also continue with uh, um, intelligence or information that um, would give out a good trend on how the world is moving towards sustainability and what are the best practices that the local operators should adopt. Now this year, um, we are proud to extend our reach to engage local community and therefore we launched what we call Farm to Functions. And this is a program to support Thai mice operator and Thai farmers. The plan is to be a um, matchmaker to work with the three mice associations in Thailand who are the 
customers or who are the consumers because majority of the members are hotels and also convention centers. So they basically are on the demand side. The other side, we also work with a lot of, uh, of uh, various farmer groups uh, from various provinces so that they can have a direct procurement on organic rice. And this basically is the first business model that solidified on partnership, private public partnership through community engagement, also introduce a new business model and bind mice operations and suppliers on food section. RICE would be the, the very first pilot project that we are working on and I think that to date uh, we are progressing very well. Farmers would be um, benefit, they, they will benefit a lot uh, from direct and advanced order from all those hotels and um, convention centers and because of the steady order or advanced order, it means that they have a steady income. When they have a steady income, it means that their social uh, welfare is better, the debt are uh, reduced, the health is better. They can plan the production easier and therefore the production cost is reduced and they adopt organic farming and therefore lesser carbon to the world. On the customer side, um, they, can, they will have a lot of good CSR stories to tell and besides all the marketing and PR opportunities, the best way or the best benefit that they can get is on cost because they can have a high quality product at a reduced cost and therefore yields are better. These are a few of the examples. The project was launched in March, and at first we have only nine venues, and then ad additional nine venues um, joined the program, and therefore we have altogether 18 venues at the moment. From 18 venues, the, the order to um, the farmers are over 420 tons of organic rice that can generate more than 610,000 US dollars a year. And um, the things that we in TSEP, my team, is very proud of is that this project can really enhance or uplift the quality of farmers, more than 100 families. And we expect more to come. Now we continue um, um, education program and also build more awareness on what we did because through Eight years of advocacy, I think that we have quite a substantial example to share and to tell um, the industry and therefore a lot of aggressive promotional campaign and marketing communication has been launched. Now on a country level, Thailand just recently announced its um, latest development plan. They call it Thailand 4.0 as if Thailand as a device or something. but. Um, in Thailand 4.0 program, they use mice as an, as an engine to drive Thailand and transform Thailand towards a value-based economy, which means that we need a lot of collaborations internally and externally. Um, there will be a lot of my cities and there will be a lot of upgrading my cities in terms of infrastructure as well as the services that they can host international events not only in Bangkok, maybe Chiang Mai up north, Phuket down south and several areas, surrounding areas. We highlight on industry cluster like what Singapore did. Uh, we also formulate my activity plan and redefine the supporting program, which I believe that we will be even more aggressive in providing good incentives, both in cash and in kind. Now, when we talk about the um, country level, um, I think it is our role as well to observe and study the global trends. And I'd like to share with you very briefly on uh, what's going on um, as global trends on sustainability. The climate change and energy issues would remain as a core um, agenda. In terms of sustainability development goals of UN, uh, inequality would shape social agenda. So basically any, com any company who would love to follow the SDG, they should also include this inequality aspect into your social agenda. 
there will be a lot more collaborations between cities and regional um, and regions. For example, um, there's a, a group of alliance called a Covenant of Mayors, where thousands of local and regional authorities in European country, in Mediterranean, in um, Central Asia, joined hand together, and they just recently announced a pledge to reduce a greenhouse gas emission by 40% by 2030. Aggressive um, goal. Mayors in some um, cities also joined the campaign of an um, urban SDG, and the campaign for an urban SDG, they would allow those cities to access to what they call Goal 11. Goal 11 would be the goal that would um, encourage or somehow groom the city to become a smart city. Financial reforms would be enhanced to facilitate the transition to a low carbon inclusive economy. Transparency are highlighted. Human rights policy will be addressed so much more and will be regulated Renewable energy would be the key to focus upon. Human health would be used as a lever um, to force any policy to combat with climate change. Sustainability, though, especially in terms of um, from developing economy, they would come up with their own specialized, specific, local sustainability practices in order to tackle the gap um, in the, both in terms of economic, in terms of social, as well as in terms of um, environmental. For example, in Thailand, we come up with our own MICE venue standard in order to make sure that we help those venues in MICE city outside Bangkok to live up to the standard. And in the standard that we launch, sustainability always play an important factor that all those venue to, uh, will have to comply to. All business operators will have to prepare to be disrupted because new technologies and business models would continue to reshuffle and therefore the speed or the, the meaning of business as usual will have to be redefined. Water crisis will be, uh, continue to be the topic which calls for a smarter water management. And I believe that this would give all um, business leaders five key opportunities. First, it is time to walk the talk. Because we have been talking about sustainability, best practices, um, the goals, some had launched a very attractive and also a very aggressive goal, but it, it takes implementation that will set a true leader apart. So it's time to walk the talk. Secondly, we have a UN already come up with um, 17 goals to transform our world uh, or SDGs. So we have already a good structure and a good direction. Again, we probably need to bring ourselves into the platform and lead our way um, um, on this path. And don't forget to focus also on social issues as well. We have to start redefining business as usual. Instead of conventional um, industry or manufacturing sector, we probably need to bring in consideration on how to create a low carbon economy. We are also responsible to encourage responsible consumption. We have to rethink on waste prevention and waste management. And we have to also pioneer the beneficial technology, especially from cost-effective renewable technologies to new te energy efficiency measures. And I believe that these are the area that we as responsible global citizens should focus upon in whatever sectors that we are serving, um, be it tourism, be it mines. Um, but as a responsible global citizen, sustainability always remain the key area that we should follow and also should focus upon as well. And that is why next year, TSEP would launch food waste prevention campaign 
and introduce the 17 SDG to mice operators. Of course, the road to sustainability is far, long, wide, tiring, but to me, it is totally worthwhile and very heartwarming. And I would encourage and invite all of you to be on this interesting road as well, because at the end of the day, the goal is just a dream without a plan and implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kunna Chapa. That was uh, fantastic and inspirational. Now we're going to invite um, Katerina, who uh, works for Wonderful Copenhagen. That's a fantastic name for a destination marketing organization. And she's going to share some of the best practice of what's happening in our Scandinavian um, country of Denmark. Thank you, Roger. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Katerina, and I'm very pleased to attend this Global Sustainable Tourism Conference in beautiful Suvong. I work at the Copenhagen Convention Bureau, where I'm responsible for the work we do within the field of sustainability. I'm here today to share with you how the city of Copenhagen as a brand in the meeting industry works with innovative initiatives in relation to sustainability. I will also tell about how we at the Copenhagen Convention Bureau constantly wish to drive a change together with our partners in the city, both public and private. First of all, Copenhagen is the capital of Denmark, situated in the northern part of Europe, also known as Scandinavia. Wonderful Copenhagen is the official convention and tourism organization. It is a non-profit organization which is both public and privately funded. We have several of networks within the key areas of in tourism, and we all know that networks and partnerships is a great way to build relationships among players in the tourism industry and learn about the different product and preferences. Copenhagen is so sustainable that you will probably have a sustainable stay whether you ask for it or not. Sustainable and green Copenhagen plays an important role in the way that we percept our city as citizens, but also the way that tourists visiting percept the impressions they get from their visit when they travel back home. On the leisure side, a lot of people choose to travel to Copenhagen due to the general image as a bikeable, walkable and clean city. But they don't necessarily have a green behavior or demand in the sense that you can label them a green tourist. As a consequence, we primarily focus our efforts in marketing the city as a sustainable destination towards the meeting and incentive industry. The city of Copenhagen is very ambitious with regards to their climate plans, and their overall aim to become the world's first carbon neutral capital by 2025 has enabled us to find a parallel green path. Therefore, luckily for us, as the official tourism and convention organization, the idea of marketing Copenhagen as a sustainable meeting destination evolved organically alongside the Copenhagen's uh, vision of becoming a sustainable capital. 42% of all energy consumption in our country is produced by windmills, and landfill from waste has been reduced to 1.8% of total, while heating 98% of the city through district heating. Cleaning the harbor for swimming has led to attractive visible urban areas with better quality of life. It has improved local business life created jobs and generated revenue in the area. Copenhageners love to use their bikes because they actually can, and 55% commute by bike each day. The main need sustainable actions and opportunities creates a city with green growth, especially due to the high ambition just mentioned before of becoming the world's first carbon neutral city. Copenhagen is very walkable and compact, with increased mobility through integrated transport and cycling solution, 
and this has helped reduce congestion significantly and improve the health of the citizens. It is easy to get around, especially because of the efficient public transportation system with trains, metros and buses, and the city is easy to navigate in. The city also recently decided to invest in electric buses as part of the development in relation to the public transport. The sustainable way of doing business escalated prior to the UN Climate Change Conference, COP15, in 2009, primarily due to this mega event with almost 30,000 participants. A sustainable meetings protocol was also developed with key learnings and the intention was sharing best practice from COP15, including the leadership strategies involved. We had an opportunity to naturally push our stakeholders to further development and engagement in sustainable practices, both nationally and internationally, especially with the number of eco-certified hotel rooms. Almost 70% of the hotel rooms are eco-certified with certifications such as Green Key, which has just been GSTC approved, the Nordic Eco Label and Green Globe as well. And this is very good for the sustainable meeting supplier development, especially when your city was decided to host the European Union presidency in 2012. The Danish government wanted this to be the first international government event with an ISO certification. In relation to this, the government decided that city suppliers had to meet specific sustainability requirements in line with the ISO 2012-1, the standard for sustainable event management. The Danish Sustainable Events Initiative was developed in relation to this. Again, in order to share best practice, examples within the meeting industry. This was a great business case that provided us with evidence that Denmark and Copenhagen is an innovative, high quality meeting and Congress destination. Copenhagen was later on voted European Green Capital 2014 due to all of the green initiatives and sustainable actions. And the sustainable development and mega events had led to the fact that Copenhagen is known as capital of sustainable meetings. The green story has given us publicity built on the fact that we have hosted a number of international events in a sustainable manner and got them eco-certified as well. We have strategically used events to build and extend our sustainable brand and showcase that it's possible to create sustainable and green experiences also from a business perspective. We also believe that this is the perfect way to inspire conference attendees to come back to Copenhagen as leisure tourists with a strengthened focus on green experiences and opportunities. At Wonderful Copenhagen Convention Bureau, we engage and encourage clients to take their meetings in a sustainable direction. We do this on different platforms such as social medias, but also face-to-face -face meetings where we tend to explain that organizing a green meeting and event in Copenhagen is basically no great challenge. We have a very close collaboration and mutual understanding in our meeting network. The sustainable initiative have given us speaking time in the industry as well as international publicity, which has been priceless and crucial in our efforts to promote Copenhagen. But other destinations also work on their sustainable portfolio. And let me be honest with you, some of them might even offer just as green a product as we do in Copenhagen. So we have to strengthen our work in order to maintain our position as a creative and innovative front runner within sustainability. An example is the Be Sustain project and campaign that also involves sustainable practices, which we created at Wonderful Copenhagen Convention Bureau. 
The Be Sustain campaign is an example on how you can interact and engage with clients on social medias in an innovative and creative way. And in 2014, the Be Sustain campaign won the ICA Best PR Award and was nominated Best Marketing Award as well. The Be Sustain initiative has generated a global buzz around the world and a tweet reach of more than 12 million since the launch in May 2014. And why did we decide to do a campaign like this with the bees? We did it because everyone can relate to the fact that bees are crucial to our ecosystem. And also, we have the support from our city. And we all need the bees in order to exist. Parallel to our campaign, the CSR project uh, called City Bee was created in an attempt to protect the bees. And the bee organization actually placed 12 million of bees around the city. And we at Wonderful Copenhagen Convention Bureau support the initiative as well and adopted two bee families in the city's botanical garden. Last year, they harvested five tons of honey with a taste of Copenhagen. And we were so dedicated to the bee campaign that even my boss, Congress Director Jonas Wilstrup, to the left in this picture, dressed up as a bee during a trade show. <laughs> Sustainability and sustainable meetings management have been on the agenda for many years. But there are a number of challenges that still prevent clients from undertaking sustainable actions and demands for green meetings. Whether it is due to lack of knowledge, lack of management because support, or if it is because they tend to believe that it's too expensive. The ICA Sustainability Meetings Region in Scandinavia was created years ago to set focus on sustainability and drive development of sustainable offers in the meeting industry. The initiative has gone global. And it's called the Global Destination Sustainability Index. It is a collaborative benchmark analysis measured in key areas. It helped us make progress in a sustainable direction, even though we have been focusing on sustainable ways of working for many years. But it is about progression. And it is a benchmarking tool that you can learn from. And it can act as a driver for sustainable efforts in your city on a global level. And perhaps help create something like this picture, which is from the Copenhagen City Hall Square during COP15. We believe that we should be the change ourselves that we want to see in the world and for our future generations. UN has set 17 ambitious goals. They are global and it is towards a sustainable development by the year 2030. And some of those goals are directly linked to the field of tourism. And tourism creates jobs and growth. And it develops cities, but it also affects the environment, which is why we have to focus on an overall city development of sustainable tourism on a global scale and show responsibility towards our mutual planet and societies. We were actually sustainable in Copenhagen before we knew it ourselves. Due to the fact that it's a natural way of life and sustainability is definitely one of the reasons why Copenhagen was voted the most livable city numbers of times and Denmark has been ranked the least corrupt country in the world together with the world's most happiest people. I would like to leave you with some thoughts on the success factors of green and sustainable meetings seen from our point of view and also experiences. First of all, it's about collaboration, commitment and progression together with the right stakeholders. When your city has an aim, 
when it comes to sustainable solution, it creates a mutual platform from the top. Which is why we have performed so well in Copenhagen with regards to the green and sustainable direction. A main factor in driving the sustainable development forward in the mice industry has been the mega events such as COP15 and the EU presidency in 2012. Additionally, we believe that you need to team up with sustainability pioneers. However, it is crucial to the credibility and success that you collaborate with the city, the people living in the city, the industry and government to make sure that sustainability is part of everyone's agenda. Thank you. Thank you much, Katarina, for sharing your powerful story about integration of sustainability. Now, I want to do something radical. Um, we haven't had a question from the audience at all today, and I want to make sure that you guys get a chance. You all came here to learn from, from our experts, and we do have 10 minutes, so I want at least one question from the audience, um, hopefully more. Who would like to pose a question to our um, leaders here from, from Copenhagen and um, from Thailand? Does anyone have a question? We have uh, 10 minutes and then we'll have a coffee and you can get some caffeine or some tea. Um, um, okay, I will pose a question and we'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. Hold that thought. So um, we heard ISO 2012 one mentioned a couple of times. I mentioned it, you mentioned it. Um, I think perhaps for this audience, maybe we should explain what that standard is. Does anyone want to have a crack at explaining what the ISO 2012 one standard is? You may be. That's me. Okay, so the ISO 2012 one standard um, is a sustainability standard obviously led by ISO, created um, for the London Olympics. It was based on the British standard 8901, and it is a sustainability framework for events, specifically for the event industry. Anyone that is a supplier um, to a major event, and it's being used in um, large athletic events, it's being used for the Olympics, for FIFA, and for all kinds of suppliers, and lots of sports events, and many... Um, Suppliers are now using it in the meetings industry as well, and it takes the kind of traditional um, ISO uh, methodology of plan, do, check, act, um, making sure that you're having stakeholder engagement um, with your community, your employees, everyone that is, is a part of, of the event, um, setting your goals and objectives, making sure that you're having the right management steps um, and methods in place, and then, of course, having that ISO continual improvement monitoring and reporting. So that's just for the events industry, but look it up if you're doing a lot of uh, events in your destination or venue. Okay. <coughs> so I love um, Nichapa. We've heard about farm to table, we've heard about farm to fork, um, and you've created this uh, whole new initiative which is um, farm to function. Um, fantastic, and I think for the audience here, it really tells a story of how impactful um, the mice industry can be. One of these major conventions you were talking about, the United Nations Convention, it could be 20,000 people coming to a city, 20,000 people eating organic food, 20,000 people generating waste. So we have a, a real opportunity to create a, a negative environmental impact, but also to drive change. Um, and then we heard from Xavier this morning that perhaps uh, many travelers are, are thinking that luxury venues can't do sustainability. And I wondered, in your Farm to Function initiative, you've got 18 venues. What's the mix of those venues? Are they like five-star hotels? Are they, are they lower end? What's the mix of the participants of that function? Thank you for the question. Out of um, 18 venues, um, seven are all convention centers. We have big five-stars, international standard convention centers, and all are in. Um, the rest are five stars hotel, which I think um, set a very good tone and sent a very good message out there to the rest of the hotels. Um, it's not just because five stars hotel normally would have international policies mm -hmm. and practices and the way that they have to change into something a little bit localized, they need to get approval from the top. Which means that if they get approval from the top, the project will have to be very good. And therefore, um, this project proves to be successful in a sense that it answers a lot of questions in terms of compliance on um, CSR campaign, in terms of uh, delivering 
um, superior services to all the um, customers who are mice travelers as well as hotel guests or um, um, even their own staff because they already give out the um, organic rice to their staffs as well, which means that everybody involved uh, um, have a good access to high level exported quality organic rice. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for sharing it. We have a question from the audience. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it says, please explain more about food waste prevention. So I think this one is, is for you, Nachapa, and it's actually uh, one that I had on my list as well. So you mentioned that in the future, your, your next goal is going to be food waste prevention. And our audience member would like to know, how is that different from waste management? Um, thank you for the question. This is a very good question. We are struggling with waste management in every country, I believe. And um, it takes a good um, and also aggressive actions, especially a very strong implementation in order to reduce waste and all, or come up with waste management policy and framework and implementations and all that. Uh, food waste in mice sector, because we are catering to a lot of audiences, um, some events, they house more than um, 100,000 visitors and therefore food waste actually uh, create a lot of loss to the corporation. Um, I have the opportunity to talk to one of the company that is handling on food waste and they come up with a module how to calculate um, food waste and come up with uh, value and uh, the brand value in terms of dollars into uh, what they the, the daily food waste program and they said that for some hotel if they handle or they manage their food properly uh, they can save up to half a million US dollars which is huge by just rearrange or re um, strategize the way that they order and the way that they handle, the, the, the way that they serve, at the same time, the way that they, um, the cooling system, delivery system, um, they can actually save up um, that big amount of money. Mm. So the program is to first educate all mice operators, especially hotels and conventions, because they are the primary source of food suppliers um, to all mice, to mice travelers. Um, on this program and what sort of saving that they can get if they enroll themselves into the program. So there would be a lot of educational materials and courses um, out there for mice operators and then we would work on um, come up with a benchmark um, or, or ballpark saving percentage and any company that hit that percentage, they probably can get a lot of incentives from mm. TSEP. Mm. Yeah. And um, this would be one of the PR messages or marketing communications as best practices for Thailand that we actually can help save the world by instead of managing at the end of the process, we rather uh, work on the beginning mm. so that instead of Focusing on waste management, we rather focus on food pre waste prevention. Yeah, I think that's perfect. It's, it's the life cycle of the food, isn't it? If you're focusing, this, this question is, is why is it prevention and why is it different from waste management? I think at the end of the, the, the process, that's when the food is wasted, but there's many steps that you can take before you get to wasting the food with portion control, guaranteed orders, buffets versus plated, and, and yeah. food donation, all those kind of great things that happen at the front end as well. Um, we have two more minutes, so I'm going to ask you a question, Katarina. So this afternoon, we, um, we learned about best practice in kind of rural environments. We heard about Bante Shamar in Cambodia. We heard about the Mekong Delta. How different um, is, is the sustainability strategy for a city from that kind of rural environment? What are the different things? How does it differ from um, rural environment to what you do, which is more kind of city sustainability? Um, can you elaborate a bit more on that one? Yeah, yeah. so th there's the requirements in a, in a sustainable hotel in a kind of rural community. 
How is it different? What are the requirements for a venue, perhaps, in, in Copenhagen? How is the strategy slightly different for the mice industry than it is for rural tourism? What are the different focus areas and needs? Well, there's a lot of focus within the food management, as we just mentioned, and then, of course, energy savings as well, and how you can create a sustainable meeting that can also help reduce the carbon footprint. So this is, that is basically what is the focus within the venues and the strategies in regards to the sustainability. It's, it's amazing what you do because of the sense of scale operating with a city as well of, of how much you, you, uh, you need to do. So thank you both for, for sharing your thoughts with us this afternoon. I think we have two more breakouts coming up next if you're interested in my sustainability and exploring that a little bit more. Thank you for your presentation. Again, thank you to our moderator, Roger Simons. Again, give them a big round of applause.